There we go. Good morning. Hi, everybody. This is uh, this song is from the movie Amelie. It's a great song. It's raining outside today, and I got to leave my door open. Kazoo makes anything funny, in my opinion. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Looks like we're back in business. I can see, uh, I can see the YouTube rolling, rolling. The Vimeo is rolling. Hugepianist.com is rolling. Hugepianist.fun is rolling. We got Twitch rolling. Uh, yeah, let's talk. How's our stream health? I think it's good. All right, everybody. Let's, uh, let's do some good talking. Let's talk about some stuff. I want to talk today about the importance of men because I just heard the new Jordan Peterson podcast. It was awesome. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the song. Oh, I'm going to lower my frame rate. I, I knew that was going to happen. This happened to me the other day. I just lower this right down. All right, let's see if that helps it out. Bad video settings. Let's see if my stream just got healthier. Is the stream health any better? Oh, my birthday was yesterday and I feel old. Play something to make me feel better. I will. When you have Dave Smith on, ask him about his interview with the comedian who got bumped by Amy Schumer. I will do that as well. Happy birthday, Amber. Amber Leonard. And my, the bear phone is popping. So if... I get paranoid when it says bad video set, uh, settings. If, um, let's see, we got Biggles. We, uh, if it, um, if for some reason it starts getting bad, can someone please text me? Several of you know my phone number. Bad, bad boy video. I'm just going to take a good two minutes right now just to make sure everything's smooth. YouTube really is streamlined way better than Vimeo though. I know, I know it is, but I'm still always going to stick with Vimeo. I'm just going to do both because Vimeo was there for me when no one else was, man. I'm dead serious. I feel that way. Like I get loyal when I'm down and people are there for me. I don't forget it in companies. All right. Yeah. Video looks good. All right. So let's talk. Let's talk. Let me get my little notepad out here. Eric Nimmer's special is finally done. It's called Send It. And it will be available at my website, hugepianist.com, by this afternoon. The great Kiwi Bear designed his cover. I think that's hilarious. And it came out awesome. My boy Joe directed it. He will have his um, his uh, company name and everything in the, in the credits. He did an, a fantastic job for a tight budget in a tight situation, and he made it work. It's the first, <coughs> it's the first um, special I've ever produced that wasn't mine. And Eric's a great dude, and he's a really funny comic, and he's the perfect, he's at the perfect stage in his career for this special. 
because he's got the skills, he's young, he's hungry, he's in a, a world of comedy that isn't like how it was when I was in comedy where the opportunities are getting a lot um, stranger and more political. So I've, al- I've always wanted to start my own comedy channel and it's a, it's a long process, you know, and, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you today about the role of men in a child's life and, and the concept of delayed gratification. But we're now, I've now produced three specials in a year and I want to uh, look for the next guy or, the, or girl. So let me know who are some funny comedians that I should have my eye out on and we can produce their special and you can own it. Um, Eric's my boy, so he's going to, I'm just going to pay him what I make on it, but other people will work out a percentage. All right. I want to show you guys some more stuff. So this is the, uh, the great Artling made my unbearable comedy production logo. It's simple. It just looks cool. Our unbearable news network logo has been, it, it was a lot of people went into this one. Uh, Panther bear put it all together, but Kiwi bear made the, the, the bear icon on the left. And a few people were involved in the UNN part of the logo. I wanted it to look like CNN, but not too much like CNN, but kind of enough like CNN. So that's going to be our official Unbearable News Network logo. And uh, that's still coming. The website is popping. And if you guys see an Owen Benjamin criticizing comment, uh, criticizing articles or saying things aren't good or funny, that isn't me, by the way. I talked about it on yesterday's podcast and I will talk about it today just for future because I've gotten emails about it like, hey, man, why didn't you like my article? I'm like, dude, that's a troll. And it's it's a smart troll. I mean, because it, it does. That's like high level trolling to do that because it's such a dick move to, to make it seem like I don't approve of someone who's funny and and contributing to the. To the. um the community. And I was thinking about that. Like what makes a troll? Like what makes one of these resentful, hateful guys who, who could have been smart, who could have been contributors to society, contributors to society and end up just being Cain, Canaanites, you know, the, the great story of Cain and Abel where, um, Cain was a loser and Abel was crushing. And so instead of becoming more like Abel, Cain killed Abel. And then, uh, his, uh, his offspring were cursed. It's very applicable to modern society. There's a lot of canes out there. And I wanted to talk about why. All right, what is this? Oh, here's a quick video. People were asking me about tree work. So I just wanted to show, yesterday I I did a lot of tree work with my brother. Here's just a really short clip of what can, this tree fell into this, um, this, this shed. So we were called to uh, cut it up. And just show you this out. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, because because the thing about this situation that I kind of wanted to explain, it's pretty interesting. Uh, how do I just move it over a little bit? So that tree was huge. It's probably 100 feet long and really, really heavy. And so we had to cut the whole way up until that point or else the tree would have just stood up. Like this tree would just go boop and it would have come back up because of the weight. Because that root system is is crazy heavy. Like that's well over a thousand pounds. And when you get at the base of a tree, it's, it's uh, full of water. So every section of that is crazy heavy. So what my brother did is he cut a wedge in... He cut a wedge there. It looks like a piece of pie because that directs how it will fall. And he kept going back and forth. That took a while. It took like 20 minutes to, to figure out how to make it do exactly what it did, which is what was planned. But it could have went a lot of different ways. So a lot goes into tree work. Just watch this. That If that had started rolling, the amount of momentum in that route is just hard for people to understand. And there's a, a gas line and an electric line right to the right behind it. That's why we didn't want it to fall straight back either. So watch this. Nice. 
Nice. Nice. <laughs> so, and then I'll show you another. So, it, and, and when you feel something that big move like that, it's it's a violent feeling. It's really tough to explain how that feels. I'll show you a tree we pulled over yesterday. Let me find it. My uh, my wife got to watch us work, which is pretty cool for a little bit. All right, so here, let me add it to the, so you guys can see it. Yeah, today might be a bit of a long one. I got a lot to talk about, and it's raining, and it's nice, and my wife and son are at uh, dance class, or is it music class, some kind of community class. It's all about the community classes. They're super cheap and really uh, good for kids. All right, so you see me way in the back there, and then my brother up there. We tie that rope to the tree, and then I pull while he cuts. He cuts a wedge. The wedge is where he is now, and then the back cut, I'll just show you, and then we'll talk about it. I, some, uh, some of you guys may be interested. Some of you probably aren't, but I just want to show you what this looks like. So at this point, he just cut his wedge. So that's to guide where the tree will fall. By the way, I get a lot of questions about tree work, so that's why I'm doing this, because a lot of you guys seem curious about it. Um, and then, but I still have to pull like really hard because you never know where the pressures are inside the tree to where it will fall. All right, so I'm pulling as hard as humanly possible on the other side. So this is called the back cut. Yeah, so that's what we do all the time. And uh, and then we both cut up the whole tree. Mostly me. That's when I do the most amount of cutting is uh, on the ground. Where you just cut it up into uh, like 12 to 18 inch sections. And that way you can split it and it makes for good wood. That was a beech tree that was hollowed out by um, a woodpecker. So it was really precarious. And... Uh, I wanted to share with people like what my day was like. So I, I, I posted, um, yeah, where is it? Let me, I, I took a picture and posted it and then just wrote something and people seemed to dig it. So I thought I'd share it and then we'll talk about the role of men in life and everything. Uh, where is it? Is it here? Yeah, here. So this is what my day looks like. I just broke it up into pictures like this. And I, it's, it's not the same day every day, but it's similar. It's similar ratios of time. So here is what my day looks like. And this is what I wrote about it. So every day from 7 to 8.30 a.m. I write, uh, like what I'm going to talk about in here and also with Crowder. 8.30 to 9.15, I always have breakfast with my family. Uh, 9.30 to 10.45, I'm on a Skype call with Sven Computer and Nake Jared and Crowder. 11 to 1, I live stream here with you guys. 1 to 2, I eat and hang out with my family. 2.30 to 8, I do tree work with my brother. 8 to 9, me and my brother or family or whoever or friends usually have beers and watch the sunset. 9 to bed, uh, hang out with Amy and then repeat. And then I added this part that... Uh, and people in castles tell me what I say is hate. Nope. What I am is the opposite of hate. And I will repeat this day, getting better and better and better until I take your castle on your hill because you aren't my king and you won't be my son's king. Um, pretty intense words from um, for Instagram. I'm starting to realize that. I was, I was combing through some of my buddies' Instagrams that are comedians and a lot of them are just really like goofy and funny. And then you go to mine and I'm like, I will not be stopped by socialist. It's hilarious. I think there's room for just being silly and goofy and funny. I enjoy that too. But I also, I think, uh, I don't know. I think having kids changes things, man. Because a lot of them, the goofy, the goofy, silly ones, even dudes that are like approaching 40 are the ones that are, uh, a lot of them don't have kids. And so their whole... 
thing is to acquire resources for like sex with like a lot of people, I think. And I think that's why they're always trying to be like, oh, no way. Look at my sweater. I'm so silly. And I'm like, dude, you're like almost 40. Like, what What the fuck, man? Like, why are you not worried about the things that are coming to hurt us? And then it dawned on me that I probably wouldn't be either if I didn't have a family. If I didn't have like little kids and a wife that depended on me, I probably would think way less about socialism and shit like that. Because I'd just be like, well, when I die, I hope I don't see it coming. Um, some people aren't that, aren't that way, which is cool. You shouldn't be that way. Now that I see life for what it is and how we, we have a responsibility to like leave a good world for the next generation, I, I, I almost get a little disgusted by people that don't put any effort into making the world better. And I'm not saying that in a lofty way, like in a narcissistic SJW way. I'm saying it in the Jordan Peterson way where it's uh, like the clean your room thing. Like what can you contribute to make the world better? And don't just run around trying to change things you don't understand. That's why I do this because what I understand is music and comedy and people and family. So that's why I do this. Some other people might understand um, the fish stocks of the ocean. I don't understand that. I don't understand a lot. I understand uh, basic economics. I understand... um, just the shit that I talk about, I pretty much understand. And it is my way of trying to leave a better world for my kids and for my nieces and nephews and for my cousins. Actually, I don't have any first cousins. I have a couple second cousins. I was, uh, I'm was i related to the guy that got overthrown by Castro. By marriage. Batista. Through a second cousin. Maybe that's one of the reasons I also hate socialism. Fucking Batista. A dirty Fidel Castro. Filthy dog. All right, like, look at this. Like, this is what half my life is with my family. And this is why I get so protective and ferocious at at the threats. Like, my son now can say three words at once. Like, watch this. This is crazy. Dough, please. More dough, please. Yay! That's three words in a row. More dough, please. I mean, that's like Asian. That's a smart dude, but That's like Asian good. We're watching that one more time. Dough, please. More dough, please. Yay! That's three words in a row. More dough, please. More dough, please. Yeah! That's so cool. That's a smart dude, but So I want to talk today about the what's facing, the problems that are facing young boys and young men. Because I think it's way, way more than young girls and I can speak on it you know it seems like women seem to be able to control men but men can't speak on women which is okay whatever but we'll damn sure speak on men and boys and what we know boys need and this whole concept of mansplaining it's like how about you don't bitch splain to me about what men need and boys need I am so lucky to have the mother I had and have and the wife I have because they understand men and they understand the role of men in boys' lives. And uh, it was perfect timing for me to be both learning about John Taylor Gatto and my ongoing and never-ending reverence and obsession with uh, Jordan Peterson to uh, to get into this uh, topic. I also have some good stories from my brother that I'm going to play in a bit too. Actually, why don't I play one story from my brother? Which one was this? Oh, yeah. This is pretty crazy. So this is kind of like how my brother and I were kind of raised to be able to take risks and just do stuff and go with the flow. And here's just an example that I I had in my phone that I wanted to share. So I was coming back from being a tree job, and I'm in Bloomingdale, and I see it's raining, and I see this guy walking down the road. He's got like, you know, fatigues, one of those denim jackets like Roki had with the collar, a hat backwards. I can see he's got like, you know, necklaces like from the 90s on almost, tattoo. And I'm like, I'm going to give this guy a ride. Because I remember one day Roki was like, no one even gave me a fucking ride. It's snowing out. Yeah, by the way, Roki's our boy who uh, I refer to as Cap, who, who was a Marine sniper who we, my brother and I were super close with. And my brother got him a job working 
trees, which helped him have a, a mission enough to not do heroin for a while. And then he died of heroin. So my brother tries to like actually live out some of the stuff that, you know, to try and help the like people that could be in Roki's position. That's what he's referring to. Yeah. So uh, he gets in the truck and he's like, can I drink in your truck? I'm like, yeah, man. You know, you, can I smoke? I'm like, yeah, he wants to go, yeah, dude, go ahead. But, and I'm driving with him, like, you know, I'm a, and I was like, you got to give me a good story, though, or something, you know, you got stories, dude. He's like, yeah, and he pulls his hat back. He's like, I got, I got shot in the head on Halloween, like a few months ago. I'm like, I'm looking at his head. He's like, yeah, I can't hear my left ear. The bullet went through here and burst out my eardrum. I woke up in ICU with my hands clamped, and they had these machines sucking blood and things out of my head. And they released me December 2nd. He's like, I was living in a homeless shelter. And they wouldn't release me unless I could go to family. And I, I'm from Saranac Lake, so they released me to my family. And I'm like, what do you want to do with your life, man? He's like, I want to help troubled youth. I'm like, did you get through high school? You didn't, did you? He's like, no. I'm like, you've been to prison, haven't you? She's like, yeah. I'm like, probably for drugs? He's like, yeah, yeah, drug, you know, cocaine. I'm like, in Tennessee, I'm like, all right, well, if you, we can get you into college. I said, but uh, like, how many beers a day do you drink? You know, like, you have a whole new lease on life. Like, what are you doing with it, you know? Yeah. I'm like, you a heroin addict? Like, you're not even going to tell me that, are you? So he goes, uh, I, I drink about 18 to, you know, like 24 beers a day, but they're tall boys. I'm like, bro, that's like 36 beers. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I drink about 36 beers. He goes, because I can feel my heart. My brain now, I can feel all these things in my body. <laughs> I'm like, well, if you want to, I want to help you. I don't know what you're going to do, dude. I, 10th grade education, you know, but you, pr you probably got to stop drinking 36 beers a day. You got kids? He's like, all oh, five of them. You talk with him? He's like, no, I don't know how to use a computer. I, I don't have a phone. <laughs> I'm like, bro, let's keep driving. So what happened? We just drove around for like hours. That's awesome. And I'm just asking more and more. Just Are I'm, you going to stay in touch with them? No. <laughs> That's a great story, dude. Yeah, so I just want to share that story. My brother's got a million of those. He, uh, like yesterday we're doing tree work. And he's obsessed with Lyme disease and ticks. Like, obsessed. And, um... And he was like, man, that's the one good thing about jail. It's like, no ticks. I'm like, you're serious too, aren't you? He's like, yeah, man. He's like, no ticks. He's like, and you got a good routine. You get to hang out with your buddies. <laughs> Somebody just wrote to me, some comedian named Steven Burr and Frank from Frosty, Heidi, and Frank in LA were just talking shit about you, asking if you lost your mind and stuff. So I just wrote, what did Heidi say? Because Frank's got demons, but I always like Heidi. I hope she didn't say anything bad that would bum me out. I like Heidi Hamilton. She's a sweet woman. But Frank, he's short. He's like 5'4", you know? I never, I always assume that little men are going to eventually talk shit. And LA comedians are always going to say that I lost my mind because I went off the beaten path. Because a lot of them are pathetic. Like, not the Rogans or the Bill Burrs or those guys. Those guys are legends. But the ones that are just kind of trying to get by in L.A. and just taking the open mics and the endless auditions that go nowhere and um, trying to conform to whatever theme of the show they have. And they just know what they're doing is stupid. And they all just have to make fun of Trump no matter what they feel. Um, they're pathetic, especially the really little ones. But Heidi's a great person, man. I, I would, I really hope that um, that she didn't, because I've done Heidi and Frank a million times in LA. They're cool people. I just, man, I don't trust little short guys, unless like I do trust them. But in general, they've done some real shady shit to me. And Frank is like, you can always tell when, they, like, when you take pictures with short men, and they always comment on their height. Um, that's sometimes an issue, because then you know they're like secretly like. Oh, you're not so tall. That that actually transitions well. Right, let me check my bear phone. And I have some uh, paypal.me slash feed the bear if you want to write me a note and send me a, uh, a tip. Or you can always super chat on YouTube. Of course, I'll get to those. But uh, the bear phone. Oh, Jeremy, your brother's take on prison. Auschwitz was great for that. 
Two, friends, routine, steady work. That's hilarious. He wouldn't like Auschwitz, though. Um, more dough, please. Um, sweet. I don't know. I haven't uh, wrote in who that is from yet. Knucklehead Bear. Interview suggestions. Bear Week. Oh, yeah. I forgot about... It was like Shark Week, except Bear Week. I was just going to interview a bunch of the bears. Ruben. Dave Rubin, his return to comedy. James Woods, as far as homeschooling Catholicism. Michael Malice, what the Jews are up to. And uh, Malinu on parenting. Those are great. I've had Malice on here. Malinu would be awesome. Woods would be awesome. And yeah, all those are great ideas. Definitely having Dave Smith on too. ARRTs wrote me, this is Donald Glover's This is America. There's a lot of shit going on in the video. On the surface, it looks like another trap video. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this after you've had some time to digest it. Happy Monday. Um, I'll check that out. But first, I want to talk about some stuff. I remember Donald Glover. I used to do sets with that guy. He's little, but he's, he's talented. So little and talented is okay. Or just well-raised. If you're like a well-raised dude, you can be uh, little and cool. It's just these, the little guys that didn't have a lot of, uh, like a, men in their life to wrestle around with or like learn stuff. The insecurity is just palpable. It's like a woman if she had like a big dick coming out of her forehead. All right, someone wrote me this. Uh, you said before that you agree with Malanu that your tribe is smart people. I doubt you'd keep a dummy out of the tribe, fingers crossed. But seriously, I'd imagine that really your tribe is people who are trying to be better and do the right thing. I don't want to conflate intelligence with morality, even though it's hard to... Um, Distinctly defined good and evil. Yeah, a lot of really smart people are really evil. But this is what I think about that. I, I think being good is smart. And I thought of that, like, when I was listening to Jordan Peterson talk to um, Sam Harris, who's undoubtedly a very brilliant man with a very high IQ, and he didn't understand the concept of what is good versus what isn't good, I, I see that as not smart. So I guess the word smart is different than intelligent, maybe. I don't know. When I say my tribe is smart people, I mean people that can understand um, context. People that can understand um, irony, hyperbole, jokes. Uh, people that can develop trust over time so that you can branch out and do stuff and, and you don't just have to re-earn people. I've, I found that in comedy. Some people have wrote to me that they want more uh, tips for up and coming comedians. Here's the thing that I've noticed that you don't really get to notice unless you've done thousands of shows. Some crowds make you earn every joke. Other crowds will trust you and go with you and you get momentum. And a lot of it has to do with city, demographic, um, whether or not people paid for the show or if they got free tickets. That's why I don't do free tickets. I'd rather have a half full show than give people free tickets because when people don't pay they are less committed to the show it's not even about money it's about commitment it's about um entitlement like if, if it's free tickets sometimes people act like they are doing you a favor by being there and i don't want them there i don't need more people i want good people you know and so you can have the same thing in friendship where you have to always keep earning your friend's friendship and that isn't true friendship. Same with relationships. If you have to feel you have to continuously earn someone's love. Don't get me wrong. In a marriage especially, you should keep trying. You should keep trying to impress, trying to satisfy, trying to grow, trying to just do something awesome for the other person that they might not expect. But that isn't the same as what I'm talking about. When I say uh, earn someone's love, it's almost like if, if there's a fear that at any time someone can just lose their friendship for you based on something you did that wasn't egregious, but just some random thing, uh, that's not a real friendship. That's an alliance, which is what the commies do. You know, they, that's why they call each other comrade, because all that means is... Um, it's not about liking the person. It's liking the uh, ideology that they're willing to adapt. And uh, it's, it's really, I think it's really gross. So certain crowds will laugh at 
a joke and then go dead again. And then you have to earn them every single joke and other crowds, you can build momentum. And, uh, and that's a quality in people I really like. So I, I, I get what you're saying though about smart people. When I say smart people, I don't mean cognitive freaks, you know? I can't remember what philosopher described it, that, that the intellectual is almost like a midget with a giant ear. Like sometimes like Tiger Woods is so good at golf, but so bad at being a, a dude. Or a lot of these people that have put so many hours into greatness and then become uh, really, the rest of them atrophy. You know, they, they, they don't develop a whole personality. They've just, they, they've spent everything becoming highly specialized at one thing. That's a very male quality. <clears throat> but if you take that to an extreme, it, uh, it, it makes for some really weird people. And, and people that are then um, worshipped in our culture, especially like actors, they can do one thing really well. And then people look at them like great people when they have no idea what they're talking about about any other topic. They're not well-rounded. And so that isn't my tribe. My tribe, when I say smart people, I don't mean just someone that can do quantum mechanics but can't, you know make eye contact when you're telling them something important. You know what I'm saying? So that's a really good, uh, good, good thing to say. But yeah, evil people are not part of my tribe, obviously. I don't think evil people are part of anyone's tribe except for other evil people. And they're not even in a tribe, they're in alliance. Evil people, uh, and when I say evil people, I don't mean that, that people don't have an ability of becoming better. I mean that they are choosing to want evil things which then makes them currently evil and when you do that long enough eventually there's kind of no going back and um they don't have friendships they don't have marriages they don't have love they don't have tribe they have allies they have comrades and they have alliances and they're only based on power to acquire it's based on acquiring power and resources and sometimes you, with other people, you can do it better. It's kind of like how businesses act, you know, with uh, mergers, acquisitions. Like these are sociopathic organisms, corporations that will be like, well, we will function better if we acquire this company than we would alone. That doesn't mean they like the company. It just means it, like like or dislike friendship or non-friendship isn't even in the vernacular of a corporation. And that's and human beings can take on those characteristics. Hey Owen, you seem to love your wife. I have a question about love. How much of it is feeling and emotion and how much of it is pure choice? Great question. I can't believe that love is based on pure rationality or else we wouldn't ever take the gamble. But I also can't believe that it's all emotion and feeling or else it wouldn't last. I also believe that you don't simply fall in love as it would cheapen it to the point of irrelevance. Also, how does one decide to fall in love? That's an unbelievable question. Uh, let's start with the first one. How much of it is feelings and emotions uh, and how much of it is pure choice? Well, for me and Amy, there's a lot of feelings and emotions right off the bat. And she even uh, remembers telling her family that she wanted to have children with me. Um, like she felt that immediately. But we had a lot of problems and um, I felt that too. I was obsessed with her since the beginning. But then you get in obsession and high level of emotion and passion can breed horrifying arguments and fights and blow-ups and, and jealousy and all this stuff if it isn't um, rational, rationally laid down. And in a marriage with children and with life, um, the friendship and the rationality and the choice of it has to grow and become uh, a huge part of it because all emotions will rise and fall and all of that early on crazy, fiery, passionate um what what word uh, emotion it's not that it doesn't last it can't last if it, it saying it doesn't last is almost like saying um it, it goes down and that has a negative connotation where it's like oh the crazy passion in the beginning um it went down it went away or it went down or it it it, it didn't last that almost implies that it's even possible to last. It can't last. Evolutionarily and 
spiritually and rationally and practically, you can't raise children in a, in a household that is like um, um, a Spanish soap opera of passion. That would be insane. That's, that's, that's borderline abusive, you know, where you just are always full of lust and, and fire and it just can't exist. So you're really, but it can pop back at times. There's times when you're alone or uh, the trials and tribulations of the outside world kind of fade away a bit and you can reconnect to that, uh, those embers of passion that are still there and that you can fire back up with choice. But being in control of passion and emotion is absolutely necessary for, for long-term relationships. And I think that's a big thing missing in, in modern relationships is, is the knowledge of that where it seems like it's either just friendship or just based on convenience and choice, or it's just crazy, passionate, sexual, dysfunctional mania. And both of those separate of each other are a recipe for disaster. And both of them uh, have to figure out a balance and they have to figure out how they work because neither one can just last. Like, unless both people in a relationship are asexual and kind of choose that and just really are not into sex for some reason or love. Maybe that can happen, but that sounds pretty dead. But at the same time, you can't live a Spanish soap opera for long or else you're just done for you. You will have a, a vicious divorce. And it's the type of divorce where 30 years later, the woman still can't talk about the guy without getting angry or the guy just became a, a drunk and just always complain, you know, that that's where that can lead to. And it's kind of like the shadow, um, the shadow self, the Jungian archetype of the shadow self, where it's like for every good emotion, there's its shadow, like for um, like ambition, the shadow self is greed. You know, like ambition's one thing where you like really want to work hard and, and, and make money for like to support your family and stuff like that. The, the, the shadow self would be greed. Like you want possessions. You want to possess. You know, or, or like um, um, to look up to someone. Like just say, hey, I look up to you versus I envy you. Those are very different things. But it's the same thing, but but the opposite. It's almost like that that uh, show, um, Stranger Things. You know, where you have the uh, the upside down world. The upside down world of darkness where... where where admiration is envy, you know. You could, you guys could give me if you ever want. If you, anyone wants to bear phone me any um, emotions that they want to, I can flip any emotion and show you the the shadow of any of it. Like um, assertiveness, the flip could be um, aggressive. Uh, let's see if anybody's bear phoning. Let's see here. Oh, that's hilarious. Someone said, oh, Bob, I'm 5'4". After we hugged behind the curtain in the dark, remember when I sat at the bar in Boston? You're not that tall in person. Ah, Bob's hilarious. No, some of my best friends aren't tall. A lot of times we complete each other. <laughs> you know, that's the thing is like little dudes either are like always trying to show off and be a dick or they like jump on my back and we have adventures together because six, seven is too big. You know, I feel incomplete sometimes without a little guy. Big old giants. What do we got here? Hi, Owen. I want to thank you for plugging my wife's business, LuLaRoe Shelley Zelaznik. I'm honored and humbled that you go out of your way like that. I also want to thank the Bear community for supporting us. We've seen an uptick in new customers since the plug. Thanks again and see you in Portland. Josh. Oh, anytime. That's what communities are about, man. You support each other. You know, it's awesome. It's the best. All right, so let's talk about some other stuff. So Peterson was doing a podcast with, let me make sure I know, I want to plug this guy because he's awesome. Warren Farrell, uh, episode 47 on the Jordan B. Peterson podcast. And the guy was a wicked feminist in the 60s and 70s. And then he kind of changed his tune when he started seeing how like, um, that, that, that movement of, of just, uh, women working and all this stuff and gender reversal and all this stuff 
it was really having a, a, a horrifying effect on children. And we're starting to see the result of that. Just the beginning of it. Wait till in 10 years, it's going to be insane. It's another topic. But so they were talking about how much boys need fathers in their life and, and like what that allows. And one of the things they were talking about is rough and tumble play, where someone did a study with rats where rats will play and the bigger rat will usually immediately pin the smaller rat. But if the bigger rat doesn't allow the smaller rat to win 30% of the time, the smaller rat will stop playing. And so they develop almost a morality of play where the, the one, the superior fighter will win the majority of the time, but they have to allow the, the smaller one to learn and to grow and, and win 30% of the time. And that continues to play. And the thing that the ruffle talk, and, and if you and if they don't have that, if they don't play, they develop ADD symptoms that can be uh, treated with Ritalin for rats. It's fascinating. It reminded me a lot of the Aziz Ansari sex story thing, where um, where that girl told the story of him doing the claw and him like being real pushy and all this stuff. And to me, it didn't sound like rape. It didn't sound like um, you know, like she went back to his house and she blew him and had wine with him and all that you know that isn't he should not face any criminal charges for that at all but what it reminded me of is people that don't understand consent and that happens physically when people aren't grown properly like they almost develop this this like uh physical autism because what rough and tumble does is um it shows you the boundaries of what really hurts and what is fun. And if children aren't allowed to play with other children or with their dads, uh, like loud noises, they'll start crying. Uh, you know, they're always startled. They don't know. They're very awkward with playing with other children. They don't understand rules. Because when it starts with just body slamming each other and running into each other and just playing and pushing and and then when you feel pain, you back off, you show signs of pain, and then you start developing rules that become soccer and football and baseball. Like this is where they starts from. And when you grow with that mindset, you learn how your body works. Like my mother, I remember being seven years old and climbing on the rafters. We're building an addition on our house. And, uh, I'd be up two stories up, just climbing on the rafters, and uh, the neighbors would call and be like, Gene, your, your son is on the roof. And, and she's like, oh, it's okay. He's learning how his body operates, and he'll be fine. And of course, I was fine. I never fell off the roof, and, and it lear I learned. And it didn't just start on the roof. You know, it started with trees, and that's why my brother is such a phenomenal tree climber. I'm not a great tree climber, not like him, um, but... You have to learn your limits, you know? It's about staying focused. And my brother's like that with his daughters, you know? Like, they're phenomenal at climbing and, and, and taking risks and not having anything happen to them because he doesn't say, be careful. He says, stay focused. He's like, focus. Because careful is a... It's almost like a double negative. It's almost like the female version of that where it's like, be fearful. And women naturally are less likely to be like that. My mom thank God, had more of that masculine trait of rough and tumble because she is from a farming community. Uh, she was born in 1942, poor family, Wisconsin, where boys were boys and they played hard and they got skin knees and, you know, she was a tomboy. She's six foot one. You know, she used to like engage in those activities and, and so she understood it. And my dad was more rough and tumble mental play where we would play all these games and music games and, and uh, rhetoric games and, and argument games and, and uh, fantasy telling stories, you know, like you say a noun, I say a verb, and then let's tell a story. Like all that, th that's the rough and tumble of the mind. And that I think is allowed me personally and my brother. And I got even more than my brother did because I got rough and tumble from my brother because my brother got put into karate because the neighborhood kids kept beating him up. It's so funny because my brother was like a stunning looking boy. Like just, it's so funny hearing like my parents talk about how much of a problem it was. Because he looked like, like just one, like just an Adonis of a person. Just blonde hair, just always naturally chiseled, tall. 
like symmetrical face, never had any zits. And so all the kids uh, in our neighborhood, I remember Richie and Muggsy used to just beat the shit out of him. Richie and Muggsy have both killed themselves, by the way. And my brother was a mess at the funeral. Like they ended up becoming friends. But so my brother learned karate and then he would practice the moves on me. And I would get that from my brother. My brother was almost like a, a more rough, more masculine father than my father was. And my father was a great father. So I got double. I think our younger brothers have that. And I've all, and I told my brother um, I, how much I appreciated that. And, he, and we cried together. And we don't cry much, you know. Like, I, I don't see my brother cry very often at all. And I had never told him that until recently. And I told him that, how much that meant to me. And how um, he helped me feel safe. And, um, and we're in skills that allowed me to have the career and the life and the family that I have. And without him, I don't know what I would have done. And it was a really touching moment, but, um, like a bunch my dad was such a good, uh, patriarch that a bunch of the neighborhood kids who didn't have dads or had like really kind of broken up families, uh, would stay at our house for long periods of time. Or, uh, my, my dad would just kind of be there for them. I remember my boy, John, John Matika, great dude. We're still friends. It's crazy. The friends that you keep that you don't realize that you will keep. But I've been friends with this dude since uh, I was five and he got me into lacrosse cause he's a hundred percent native American. Right. And this dude is wild and athletic and fearless and just, you know, three beers and he's punching you in the face and was a, probably on a road to prison. And, um, he got in trouble in school in a way that, that he should, if, if I had been in trouble the way John was in trouble, I would have been okay because my, I had, uh, parents that would have come in and articulated what the deal was and all this stuff. And my dad went in on John's behalf and made sure that he wasn't, uh, expelled. He was about to be expelled. And so John finished school and now John has a beautiful family and a wife he loves and a business and he's in Georgia and he's crushing and he, uh, we text each other all the time and uh, he even recently said man I don't know what I would have done without your dad and I think that that's that's what privilege is is having a father and I am very grateful for it and um, I know what my life potentially could have been like without a father and uh, I'm not I'm, I don't think it, it has much to do with race, as some people do, at all. Even some non-racists think that. Like, they think that there is uh, predispositions to certain behavior and stuff. Um, I don't think that at all. I think a lot of it has to do with government programs that absolutely fuck up communities. And that's one reason why I hate socialism so much. That the concept of a reservation was just a family crusher for a lot of uh, American Indians. And... Same with uh, welfare state with black people and, you know, and they, and they do it to white people too. It's just a lot of white people don't have that. And so it's easy to see white people as privileged when tens of millions of white people live a similar life to my friend John or to a lot of my other friends. Um, but they get ignored because it's easier just to say it's race. A lot of my white friends growing up didn't have dads and they a lot of them are in prison now or dead. And um, that's one reason why the concept of white privilege always bothered me so much. Because I literally have the, the ghosts of my friends in my ear whispering, tell them the truth. Tell them what it's like to have no mom and to be, or to have no dad and to be molested by stepdad after stepdad after stepdad. And what that does to you. And then what it does when you pick up a crowbar and beat someone to death. You know, their white skin did not solve any problems. And so when I come across as fairly harsh about those opinions. It's not because of any animosity or uh, prejudice towards non-white people. It's because of the experiences I've had and the stories that are not being told about white kids with no dads or white kids with broken homes or white kids that were abused as children that ended up on the same exact path that John could have. And, and I'm so proud of John, man, because his, he beat odds that you can't imagine. And now he's, um, like he, uh, like he comes to my shows when I go to Atlanta and he's so proud of his family. His th uh, three children now, I believe, and just obsessed with his wife, been with his wife for a really long time. And 
it's just it's just a heartwarming uh, story. Still wild as fuck. You know, if we were drinking, I would literally keep an eye out that he didn't just cold cock me and knock me unconscious. But, uh, and just an unbelievable cross player. Yeah, rough and tumble play. We used to break into a, a, a skating rink in the summer and just play lacrosse on the cement all day long. And that's why we got into box lacrosse. Used to play in Quebec uh, with all the reservations. And man, Indians, some of the best athletes on the planet. And then the, their social economic um, worlds kind of break, like fuck their lives up. And, um, like, I'm not a determinist. I'm a big free will guy, but there are certain statistical probabilities based on where you are in society that will change the odds that you can climb out of it. And, uh, I saw a lot of that with the, with the tribes and, um, because of government programs, because these goddamn government programs, they, they, everything that sounds like help is not help. You know, like here's a, here's a reservation where you don't have to follow the rules of the nation and we'll subsidize uh, single motherhood and we'll put a casino on there. And before you know it, it's just a place where, you know, you can, um, a hub for giant drug uh, running cartel situations and, and broken homes and addiction and it's just crazy. So... That's, that's how I feel about some of that stuff. Because I know like racially, things can get weird. But I don't think race is really a factor. There are certain predispositions. Don't get me wrong. I'm convinced. Uh, like a lot of American Indians, like the First Nation people, and a lot of people like uh, my wife's dad and half of my wife, which is like that real ethnic Mexican that's basically the same as Navajo or Aztec or all those tribes, the, the nationless tribes, can't fucking drink booze. You know, it's it, there's something going on with the metabolizing of um, alcohol where they don't pass out. I talked about it before and uh, an American Indian commented on my Facebook page where they're like, you, that's, that's exactly right. It's like we don't fall asleep. And I don't know what that is. I don't know. Maybe it was just uh, some dietary situation. But like shit like that. It's nothing major though. I don't think that genetic predispositions lead to like massive criminality type stuff. I think that um, uh, broken homes do though and a lack of father. Because if you don't have a father to help you understand boundaries and games and growth and how to interact with other people properly... You can't, like, that's when, um, that's when you get hyper violent because like little things seem very threatening. Like someone that is very socialized by, um, an adult male in the family or brothers or uh, even a grandfather, just some sort of man in your, in your life, you can see what a game is and what is a threat. And that's why I think a lot of, um, black kids in the inner city with single moms and no dads, and in, a, in an area with a lot of violence, but still a lot of welfare money pumping in, it's, a, it's the worst possible setup for a child's life. That kid has almost no chance. And I'm a free will guy. It's like they don't know where the limits are with interaction. And then I'll bring it back to the Aziz situation with sex. This whole concept of having to verbally consent to everything you do sexually is insane, but it's understandable if you're dealing with a population that doesn't know, they can't sense boundaries. You know, it's like um, sex is almost like rough and tumble play in the sense that there's the littlest movements and looks and I can't even explain it. You just, it's like music. You just know what it is and where it's going and, and, consent is implicit in movement and stuff like to verbalize i am going to touch your breast with my hand is that okay like that's fucking crazy to me but if you don't know how to read a face or you don't know what consent feels like or what breaking uh, like a physical boundary feels like you almost need that shit because you don't know when to stop you don't know when to go and another thing that's happening is um 
pornography is really causing a lot of problems for young men because um, they're not aroused by women anymore. You know, because if you watch all this porn, this is the thing about porn. This is why I, I watch as little porn as humanly possible. Don't get me wrong. Every now and then on a long, I'm on the road a long time. I've slipped up, you know. I ha- I'm, just, I'm not going to lie to you guys and say I, I, I never have slipped up and watched some porn and had a whack. But, uh, you know, it, it's happened. But it's definitely not, it's not good for your dick. And it's not good for your mind because what it does is it uh, it makes it so those like just that look or that touch or, or holding hands or just being close to a, a woman is arousing as fuck unless you watch a hundred hours of porn a week and then you feel nothing except shame and impotence and that you're not a man and then you have to overcompensate with like this rapey behavior or violence or just becoming one of these SJW guys, you know, cause you don't know how to, how to be, cause like anything great, like people uh, have told me that I'm awesome at the piano for a long time. And it's like beautiful and great and all this. It's from an unimaginable amount of failure. Like it's unimaginable. Like, okay. Like this song I learned in my adulthood. Uh, guys a lot of you guys right now are probably like that's mind-blowing you're a genius nope i worked and worked and worked to the point where sometimes you guys are like what's amy's favorite song to hear you play and sometimes i look at amy and she almost starts laughing because she's so fucking sick of it like that song where me and amy are living in a condo and i played it wrong and just starting over like all right so i'd be like Like, imagine that for hours. And um, greatness only comes from the ability of, of doing a mistake and not feeling shame and then quitting. It's, it's about delayed gratification is one of the, one of the uh, best ways to tell the success of a person in their later life. There's this marshmallow test that they've done with kids where they put a marshmallow in front of a four-year-old and they say, you can eat this now or wait 10 minutes, you can have two marshmallows. And the kids that wait 10 minutes, they track their life and uh, they do way better in life. It's crazy. It's delayed gratification. So if I just started playing the piano and I couldn't do it and I went, ah, I'm not a piano player. You see how fucking stupid determinism is? Because that's what people do. They say, oh, well, Owen's talented and I'm not at the piano. No, you have predispositions. Don't get me wrong. I have talent. But... It doesn't matter that much. And I really believe that. Where it's like, it's a lot of it is just work. It's just like, can you fail over and over again? And rough and tumble play and fathers will teach you that. Because you're starting to see the the rise in school shootings, I think will only continue. And it's not the existence of guns, obviously. It's the lack of fathers. 26 of the 27 biggest shootings in America were of children without biological fathers in the home. That is a profound correlation that no one wants to address because what you start seeing is a, is a boy start thinking like I matter. How come no one sees that I matter? Why am I seen as shit? Because they're not allowed the tools to be great at anything. The tools to be great at things are learn how to follow rules, not orders, rules, big difference. Orders is is much different than rules. Following orders is is compliance. And that's important in certain parts of uh, certain jobs, certain uh, branches of the military, all that stuff. I get that that there's times for orders or whatnot. Rules are parameters that then you can empower the individual to thrive. Think of Michael Jordan. He's following the rules of basketball, but 
he's not following orders. He's, he's just literally jumping over everybody. He's showing greatness within a set of rules. And that's, that's very important to give to, um, I'm only going to speak on boys because I'm a boy and I don't want anyone to bitch blame to me about, I don't want any woman to bitch blame to me about what boys need, but you know, there's a lot of tests and, and a lot of experts say that, that having a father in the home for girls is unbelievably valuable, but I'm not even going to go down that. So as I'm just watching my brother in trees, I just really wanted to talk about that. And I will, um, I'll check my PayPal's now and see what you guys have to say about any of this stuff. Um, oh, we have a thousand watchers on, on YouTube. That's why I didn't even check because I like to stay in the zone for as long as I can. I was coming up with a funny joke. Me and my brother were talking about it yesterday that, uh, I wonder if in the future you can't have colored pencils that every pencil, like if you say colored pencil, it has to be pencil of color or something like that. Because, uh, well, obviously, because uh, we're, we're boys with some uh, state troopers. And I guess they had to go, like, they had colored paper bin and they had to go with paper one and paper two. Because that's how fucking nonsense people are getting. Because when you raise a bunch of boys that can't fucking understand parameters, because no one wrestled with them and their dad was either in jail or just fucking drinking soy somewhere, divorced. Um... You don't, like, everything is terrifying to people. And, and, um, and comedy, by definition, is, is threatening. It's threatening to your mind. It's not threatening to anything important. It's almost like a simulation. It's threatening to your mind, but that's what causes joy and pleasure and laughter. And uh, so this modern SJW, soy, fatherless, uh, female men movement is... is the end of comedy unless we all fight it because it literally, you can't, I, cause I'm starting to have compassion for these fucking people. I'm going to play guns and roses in a bit too, by the way. But, um, like I got another one of these from, from YouTube. Let me try and find this image. You have to be able to make mistakes. All right. So this is from YouTube. All right. Hello, a post you made contains content that violates our terms of use. This message serves as a warning. Additional violations will result in the termination of your account. Please read our terms carefully and refrain from posting abusive material in the future. Thanks in advance for your understanding and cooperation. By the way, thanks in advance implies my compliance, which I do not comply. So when you say thanks in advance, that's saying I'm already expecting you to comply. Don't say thanks in advance because I'm not complying to that. Because what this note is to me, like a well-rounded, socialized adult male, that is abusive. Calling someone abusive that isn't abusive is a form of abuse. It's torture. Like imagine if I, you just keep going up to someone and saying, you're a rapist. And they're like, no, I'm not. And then you just keep saying it. That's abuse. That's literally, I think it's a felony. So they won't say what post it was. So they won't let me learn from my mistake. Bear in mind, there isn't any abuse in my posts. Um, so they don't give you parameters. They don't give you rules. They're just giving you a order to follow, which is very, very female. Where you just say, change because I said so. And I'm like, but what's the rule? The male is supposed to say, this is what you did wrong, buddy. This is what you can't do in the future. That breaks the rules of play. And then men don't want to play with you. And then you lose all your friends. Uh, like I broke the rules of, of LA comedy. That's why I became uh, isolated. and I got ostracized by a lot of them because I broke the rules. I went off grid. I, I criticized the power that, that pays them all. Warner Brothers, Sony, all these people are, are paid by uh, the government and giant corporations that have a very specific interest in mind. Open borders, uh, men and women being treated identical so you can double uh, the double taxes. You can, you can collect double the taxes when women aren't moms and, and they're just in the workplace. And also it devalues labor. So you can pay people less because there's twice the amount of people. That way you need open borders, the immigrants to come raise your kids and for social security, which is a Ponzi scheme. 
Uh, I'm also anti-socialism, and that's important because the government is trying to become socialist, not because they're good altruistic people who really care about the trans midgets, but because socialism is the ultimate authoritarian form of government, and so they want that. So me speaking against that angered a lot of L.A. powerful comedians so that I was kicked out of their crew. Now, lots of comedians all over the country write me notes about how I'm inspiring and how they're glad I'm here and how they learn from me and all that because they're not being fed by the same monster that the people on these sitcoms that no one watches and the people on these movies that no one watches and these Netflix specials that people turn off halfway through and go, is this really comedy? That's why the people that still like me are the only ones doing it for themselves. Joe Rogan, the Impractical Jokers. You know, um, I'm not even going to list anymore because I don't want to fucking get anyone in trouble. It's hilarious. It's so fucking pathetic. Oh, I want to see if, uh, I, I don't think Heidi would talk shit about me, though. Uh, dude, people all day, like famous dudes will write me like, what the fuck is this shit? And it's like SJW memes, but they'll never publicly support me. Like ever. It's hilarious. Not hilarious. It's set, it's just like, they're what a bunch of fucking bitches. No wonder their fucking wives don't blow them anymore, and they're always complaining. Oh, she doesn't suck me. It's like, that's on you, man. Like, do something better so you get sucked. So anyway, so um, I almost have compassion for these people in a real weird way, even though I know they're they're fucked. Is because they can't handle jokes. Like, they'll perceive a joke as abusive because they don't understand it. And they and they see it as, they don't understand boundaries. They don't understand uh, trust. They're never like, oh, I trust him to make a joke because he's a comedian and he has all these credits. No, every single post is a whole new thing where they go, this hurts me. Take it away. A father is the dude who, who teaches you, no, face it, buddy. That doesn't hurt you. Face that. Show them what you got. Make a joke back. Don't show pain. Don't take your ball and go home. Because then people don't want to play with you. Have you noticed you go out in the streets now in America and there's nobody playing in the streets? When I was a kid, the streets all day long. Me and John Matika, Ian, the Hungers, playing street hockey, playing um, um, lacrosse, playing everything all day, every day. I'll just That's all we did. I played when I was going through my fat phase. I was always the goalie. That's all right. I could take shots to the face. You know, that's how I got respect is that a high pain tolerance, but just all day play, 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 you know, um, you get, you get some wounds, but it doesn't kill you. What kills you is not doing that. You know, everyone's so scared of their little boy getting hurt. It's like, no, you can be hurt and it, nothing really happens. Why well, know it's more likely to kill you. Fucking suicide, heroin, obesity. The things that happen when you just sit in your fucking room. All right, it's from Reagan. You went on ad potential. You're not. Uh, you're not you when you're soy. Gag on the Snickers commercial. That's funny. That's really funny. Have a guy like Kimmel pitch a fit and you replace his tofu with a snake or something. And he turns back into a lumberjack. That's really funny. Or uh, it's just a girl. And then he eats a, and then she eats steak and is back to being a guy. Uh, Cher, um, Cheryl. Hey, Big Bear, I'm traveling to Florida to see my Nana, who just turned 99 for her birthday. She is a legend. She walks every day and reads a book a week. The only change is lately that she naps more. She loves to laugh. She had to wait months, assuming my grandpa was dead after he was blown off a boat in World War II. Man, that's delayed gratification, huh? It's like... You wouldn't know for months if the person you love the most in the entire world was dead. And then when you saw them. And in that time, you had to have restraint. And you had to you couldn't throw a fit. You had to just get through your day. Man, hats off to your uh, Nana. She's a tough, she's a role model. Will you sing a song, a silly song for Ethel May? Love you, Bunny Bear, Bluegrass Correspondent UNN. Yeah, I'll sing Ethel May. <laughs> Is it her birthday? Methyl May, today is your day. We had 99 beers on the wall in 99 years. You thought your man was dead, but he 
just came back with a sore head. World War II, he won it for us. Happy birthday, Ethel May. Your birthday is in the month of May. My grandma's name was also Ethel, and she was sweet too. And I just wanted to say happy birthday to you. There you go. Happy birthday. You want to know how I could riff that so quick? Because I've made that I've made mistakes so many times that I can be comfortable with mistakes and miss a line or not think of a rhyming word and just smile. And that's something that my dad taught me and my mom taught me um, that you can make a mistake and just try again and try again and try again. And, and that's how you get skills. It's not a secret. It's not from uh, a race or a gender or money. It's from being able to make mistakes. Hey, Big Bear, Biggles Bear here. Could you possibly pitch uh, during a Music Man parody for You Got Trouble? With Crowder, you can do it to the LGBT. Also, this may be my last donation for a while. I now have to save up. I'm going to need knee surgery. Also, your Twitch is now on the right settings. Dude, if you need help with cash, I can give you cash. You don't ever have to give me money. That's another thing. I haven't been able to do it in a while because I've been a little hammered with cash lately because I had to pay my publisher 20 k Dude, fucking sucks. But um, if anybody is in a bad spot and ever just needs, you know, a reasonable, not monster, but, you know, just money to help get out of a hole, you know, Big Bear's here for you. Um, let me read that again just to make sure I got the pitch right. Could you possibly pitch uh, doing a Music Man parody for You Got Trouble? See, I don't know what that is. I don't know what Music Man is. And Crowder, you can do it to the LGBT. Um, good luck on your knee and let me know if you need any help for real. Even if it's not money, just like soup or some shit. I know people everywhere. Jeremy, would you mind expounding on friendship versus allegiance, particularly with how difficult it is to form new friendships after a move, finishing school, etc. I'm very close to my brothers and sister and have a few good friends, but making new friends, true, not acquaintances from scratch can be very difficult. Contrast this with my father-in-law who had the typical 50s leave it to beaver childhood and still hangs out with his elementary school friends except his best friend who stopped talking to him after Trump won. Thoughts? Great question. It's tough, man. It's tough making new friends older in life. That's one reason why it's great to have my brother around. He can make friends really well. I'm not great at making friends because I had the same friends from middle school through college and beyond. And some of my friends from kindergarten. Because I think experiences and trauma and growth can really bond you. And uh, it makes you really have that trust that you don't really get from like buddies you meet later in life. Although I will say this, I've been making friends lately that I really like because, um, because the country has such upheaval right now and our culture has such upheaval that, that finding people with similar values and similar senses of humor and similar, similar goals in life um, has felt really good for friendships. Like, Jeremy, I consider you a buddy, you know? And we're like cyber friends. We talk. I, I'm a, I'm, I work a lot. I'm home a lot. I'm like, a, I'm like an introvert in a weird way. I can talk for hours, but that's just a skill I've developed. You know, Amy thinks I'm fucking like a, like a hermit. It's hilarious. My brother will just, uh, if you walk 100 feet with him, it'll take an hour. Because every person, it's someone he knows or someone he wants to know or someone who's fucking blowing his mind. And that's why I've always like went to where my brother lives. That's why leaving here is so sad. It really is. But it's something it's better for the family. It's, um, it is. Jordan's a great name. I almost want to name my son Jordan after Peterson. Oh, and Real Dakota Bear here. I sent a long text to the Bear phone yesterday that I hope you'll read on the live stream at some point. But I'm an aspiring comedian and I competed in the North Dakota Comedy Contest this past weekend. And I'd like to send you my set for you and the Bears to see and give me your thoughts. Do it right now, dude. Why didn't they laugh at gmail.com? Dude, we'll watch it right fucking now. Bear phone's great and all, but there's a lot of bears on there now. And it's really fun to answer stuff live. And um, it's a great um, 
asset to have where I, I, I can text you guys and I, I, you won't be canceled when I lose my Facebook, which is happening any day now. Just, just fucking do it, Zuckerberg. Stop threatening me like a little asshole. But uh, it's, it's a lot easier to talk about stuff here because it's just in written form. And um, the bare phone's still sweet, but it gets real tough to organize. Um, yeah, dads are important. I'm so disappointed in Guns N' Roses. They used to be rebellious band. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to Guns N' Roses in one second. Uh, why didn't they laugh at Gmail? Dot com. I plan on doing at least another 45 minutes. So if you want us to all watch your set, I'm down. Because if I put it off, I won't ever do it. I'm just telling you that. Like I get, it's such a blessing, but it's something that I have to understand. I get so many messages now that um, I just, I won't be able to find it. All right. I didn't get a great response from the audience, but I think you and the bears will dig it. Dude, I love you already, man. Where it's like... It, even if you don't get a great response from the audience, it's still so valuable. And that's what, um, why, why I did the podcast, Why Didn't They Laugh? You can still, now it's this. If you're listening to this right now on audio, it's Why Didn't They Laugh? But back in the day, it was always me breaking down specific jokes and why people didn't laugh. It got a little, now it's better to do it like once a month in that format. But um, that's why I think I became friends with Joe Rogan because I think fighting is similar where you have to get the shit beat out of you and choked out a lot to get good at fighting. I didn't get a great response. All right, so where should I send my set to so you and the Bears will be able to see it? So why don't they laugh at gmail.com? Send it right now. William, hey Owen, thank you for your work and congratulations on baby two. Regarding the uh, Second Amendment in the 20th century, 1900s, the accepted population of the world was 11.4 billion. This includes everyone who died on January 1st, 1900, and everyone born... I have no idea what this what you're talking about. I, I might need to really think about this. All right. Additionally, the population in 2000 was 6 billion. This means that 5.3 billion people died in the 20th century. With the minimum amount of people murdered by their own governments being 100 million and maximum 250, these don't include war-based deaths. From my analysis, it seems the real number is around 165. This means that 1.44%... Oh, dude, this is great. 1.44% of the population of the world was killed by their own governments in the 20th century... And a little over 3% of all deaths were from one's own government. Uh, I also have a full biblical explanation of why no Jew or Christian should be anti-gun. If you're interested, let me know. It's long. Yes, of course I'm interested in that. Email. Why don't they laugh at gmail.com? Here's a joke I think would be hilarious with a more family-friend-oriented uh, crowd. Guys, you're going to thank me for this one. How many women have kids? Let's give it up for the women. Applause. How many of you breastfed your kids? Any of you women ever forget to pump? Man, from what I hear, that shit hurts. There's all kinds of swelling and pressure. Yeah, this is what... Dude, you, do you know I do this joke? Yeah, this is what it's like for a guy's balls, constantly producing his whole life. Women help... Dude, I do, that jo I do that joke almost word for word. That's hilarious, William. We have a similar sense of humor. Uh, I'd like to be verified as Aqu Aquaria Bear. Welcome, Aquaria Bear. Uh, yeah, I do that exact joke. It's... um. I'm I'm trying I'm in a, a museum with my wife who who uh, says she needs to pump and I think she wants to bone and I get excited she's like no breast pump and that explains to me that the soreness and how they're full and I said that's how my balls feel it's a similar joke Sean that was very generous buddy stay true to you can't wait to see you when you come to Boston I will come to Boston very very funny town oh here we go oh and I don't know if you already uh, plugged up Harmonicaster Electric Harmonica that I invented and developed if you have it. Oh, by the way, this dude is always super chatting, so he's real legit. Um, it has a cool electric tone. It's compatible with any kind of effects, pedal, or device, and it can play as loud as your amp will go without howling feedback. The heart players who have tried it are, no pun intended, blown away. Info at harmonicaster.com. So that's H-A-R-M-O-N-I-C-A-S-T-E-R.com. This dude's great, too. That's why I gave, like, I'm all about plugging stuff of people that I know. Every now and then, someone will write in something that's just such a commercial for like five bucks. And I don't even read it. Where it's like, hey, Owen Benjamin, it's cool you're doing this. Anyway, tell people that they can have a beach body where I, I literally just look at it and just keep go going. I'm like, no, you don't get a fucking commercial in front of thousands of people for five fucking bucks. Unless you're a bear and you're awesome. 
then I'll fucking plug it all day long. About community building, baby. All right, so I, I finished those. I'm sure I have a bunch of uh, YouTube Super Chats, which is tremendous and great and awesome. But I really want to talk about Guns N' Roses. So let me just hit a couple of these. Um, make sure I get the, the higher ones just so um, I'm not a huge dick. Carl, I just did a video, Jay Peterson style, on Dumbo and its message to young men and family. I'd love the bears to check it out. Can I be Phil, Philos, Philos Bear? Welcome, Philos Bear. Thank you for all you do. Take out the brackets. YouTube, ah, that's all gibberish to me. But I, I'll tell the people to search it. So um, what can people search for? Uh, uh Tell me what, what people can search for, because links are not very good here. I don't know how to even plug that. It's like, it looks like robot talk. Oh, Harrow. I don't know what that means, but I appreciate the super chat. Um, I don't know what uh, currency that is, but it might be very generous or nothing. I don't know what your country goes with. But uh, the boys today have the illusion of being able to be free without being forced to take on responsibility. You'll have to take on in order to be it. Exactly. Freedom is all from responsibility. Can you break down American Pie by Don McLean? That's from Jeff. Can I be uh, verified as uh, better dead than red? Yes, better dead than red bear. I was thinking I wanted to make uh, Kill a Kami for your mommy shirts. Owen, you need to set up a chat forum ASAP. Uh, good opt against banned censorship. I, oh, dude, we have one. I haven't heard from Coder Bear recently, but Coder Bear invented one. Coder Bear, the fuck's going on with the app? Uh, I like Zen Foro Forum. Well, we have uh, the Bear Feed, like an original app that all these guys worked hard on. I'm 5'6". How do I not be an evil short guy? Well, if you're asking the question, you're not an evil short guy. Evil people don't ask how to not be evil. So you're good. I kind of overreacted about the short thing because uh, a, a short guy was talking shit about me. Yesterday was really cool when you went through Moonlight Sonata. Maybe make that a regular. Deconstruct classical piano from your perspective. That's a great idea. Justin Bear here. Here's a question I've been thinking about that I thought I'd ask you. Does jealousy have value in driving humans to improve themselves or is it purely negative? It, nothing's purely negative. It's all the, think of Cain Abel, light, dark, good, evil. It's all connected. So it's, it's like that show uh, Stranger Things. Like you could argue that without the upside down world, you can't have the world. Right? So let's say jealousy. Jealousy is also uh, protectiveness. Like being protective is also, if you, if you allow the cane of your brain to take over, it's jealous. But protective is the same root. So I think that um, like efficiency and laziness are the same thing. It just depend not the same thing. It's 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 just the upside down world of each other. It's Cain and Abel. It literally is that. Uh, drunk, drunk in Denver. Hey Owen, do you have any plans to do shows in Colorado? Yeah, dude. Everyone keeps telling me to go to Colorado. Three four by Pink Floyd. Ver uh, verify me as Atari Bear. Love you. Um, someone was Atari became Atari Bear yesterday. So you got to come up with another one. We we verified Atari Bear yesterday. You can also check out unbearablefamily.com to see all the bear names. Unbearablenewsnetwork.com. We're going to start doing the video news very soon. I realized I needed a better camera. Can I be uh, verified as Rugby Bear? I'd, uh, welcome, Rugby Bear. I'd love to come do some tree work with you and your bro this summer. That'd be a blast. Some of the bears are definitely coming up. When you have Dave Smith. Oh, I asked. Uh, I read that one. Read a song about Shapiro, Shapiro called Hebrew Hammer. That could be fun. Thanks, Abraham. Uh, can I be verified as Throwback Bear? Didn't see one on the registry last night, but might have missed it. Have an awesome day, Big Bear. Welcome, Throwback Bear. All right, let's analyze a song. How's the video, by the way? Is the video held up? Uh, Owen, can I be verified as Physio Bear? Welcome, Physio Bear. Um, all right, I think we're good. But you can't always tell. Because when the, when the chat's going slow and there's a 1,000 people, sometimes I don't know what's happening. Yeah, someone, Solid Gamer made a good point. You can be Atari... 5200 bear. It's good. All right. Thanks, Westside Bear. Uh, wait, where can I register my bear name? Uh, unbearablefamily.com. I'm not bear enough to be a bear. Well, well, fucking bear up, man. No, the unbearable family won't get, get back to you or at least me. 
Yeah, I want to do my own registry because I'm not in charge on Bearable Family. And ever since I've been off Twitter, I don't really hear from Island Bear very often. So someone, can someone help me with that? Send me all the fucking bear list. I'm going to start my own uh, my own bear registry on Huge Pianist. I want to be completely in charge of that because I think it's really important to uh, to have a full-blown registry. Uh, bear form. Also... Actually, fuck it. I'm going to stay on board with um, uh, Strauss. What's up, buddy? All right. One in a million. So this is a, a news item. So Guns N' Roses has a song called One in a Million, which is one of their classic songs, and they're not including it in their an- anthology. They've made the decision because of the lyrics, and I, th- I think that's disgusting because it's one of the best written songs they've ever written because it it, it embodies the frustration of, of people so honestly, and he uses the right words. And um, the fact that it's, it's gonna be uh, removed 1984 style is insane. This is how it goes, it goes. Guess I need some time to get away. I needed some peace of mind, some peace of mind that'll stay. So I thumbed it down to 6th in L.A. Maybe a Greyhound could be my way. Police and niggas, that's right, get out of my way. I don't, I, 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 I don't, I, 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 I don't need to buy none of y'all gonna change the day and I don't need no bracelets clapped in front of my back I just need my ticket then won't you cut me some slack you're one in a million yeah that's what you are sing that high but anyway so obviously that one side uh line is pretty intense but listen to this one immigrants and faggots they make no sense to me they come to our country they and they, they uh they think they'll do as they please like start so many i ran to spread some fucking disease they talk so many Damn way he is, it's all Greek to me. Well, some say I'm lazy, and others say that's just me. Some say that I'm crazy, yeah, yeah. I guess it all i be. But it's been such a long time since I knew right from wrong. It's all I just keep moving along You want in a million Ooh, yeah, yeah. You're a shooting star Alright, so you get the idea, right? This is a brilliant song You can't even say it's anything He's just, like, annoyed And, and that guy would say those words Guess I need some Alright, let's, let's, let's establish who the character is in the song. Guess I needed some time to get away. So he's already he's frustrated. He's leaving somewhere. I needed some peace of mind. That means he doesn't have peace of mind. Some peace of mind that, that'll stay. So I thumbed it down to 6th and LA. That means he doesn't have a car. He's hitchhiking. Maybe a great hound could be my way. That, okay, he's blatantly has no money, no car, and he's capable of taking risks. He has no peace of mind, and he's trying to leave somewhere. All right, we're establishing the character. Police and niggers, that's right. Okay, if he had just said niggers, 
That's one thing, but police and niggers means like, it's all, he's like, fuck this all. Fuck the police, fuck, fuck the people they're arresting. He's like, get it all out of my way. He's like, get this, that shit out of my way, right? And that guy would use those words. Don't need to buy none of your gold chains today. Like, get, get away from me on the street. I don't need bracelets clamped in front of my back. I just need my ticket. By the way, this isn't Axl Rose. This is a character. Axl Rose is worth $100 million when he writes this. But he understands the character. He's probably been someone like this in the past. That's what art is. Like, Axl Rose doesn't ride in a fucking Greyhound bus. He owns the bus. Just need my ticket till then. Won't you cut me some slack? You're one in a million. That's what you are. You're one in a million, babe. You're a shooting star. He's singing this to the man. Maybe someday you'll see before you make us cry. You know we tried to reach you, but you were much too high. Much too high. He's like, he's like you're one in a million, but you're, you're fucked up. Immigrants and faggots make no sense to me. They come to our country and think they'll do as they please. That, that's a valid thing to say. Like, no one gets hurt more or frustrated more by immigrants than people that have to ride on a Greyhound bus or hitchhike. Uh, like lower working class America of any race is the most displaced by immigrants. The uh, Hollywood elite, the wealthy in Washington, they use immigrants as slaves to raise their children and to rape and to do all their manual labor of their house. So don't think that there's any moral... Um, there's any more morality in saying we have to let in all the brown people into our country when you're worth $100 million. There's no morality in that. It's because they're not taking your jobs. They're not displacing you on the street. They're not um, raping your daughters, which is happening in England and Sweden and all these places, you know? So, and, and bear in mind, this is from the late 80s, early 90s. So AIDS was being said that was it was coming to kill everybody. So that's the the gay thing. Uh, like some start some mini Iran or spread some fucking disease. They talk so many goddamn ways. It's all Greek to me. He, he's not able to adapt. He's a frustrated man. Well, some say I'm lazy, and others say that's just me. Some say I'm crazy. I guess I'll always be. He's admitting he's crazy. But it's been such a long time since I knew right from wrong. It, it, it's from the point of view of a broken man. That's why the censorship thing, it's so bad for art. Like, you have to be able to say the words that this man would say and the frustration of it. Like, he wouldn't say, police and African Americans, get out of my way. No, fuck no, he wouldn't say that. He wouldn't be like, immigrants and LGBTQAI. No. But it's been such a long time since I knew right from wrong. Think about that statement. He's like, I don't know up from down. Like, he's in chaos. He's in the belly of the beast, as Jordan Peterson would say. It's all the means to an end. That's a quote from, um, means to an end is either Nietzsche or the prince, Machiavelli. I don't, Machiavelli was will to power. Means to an end. Uh, ends justify the means. I don't know. It's one of those guys. But that's a that's an intense thing to say. It's all means to an end. I keep moving along. You want a million. You want a million. Maybe one day we'll see you before you make us cry. We try to reach you, but you were much too high. And then he's... Oh, there's more to it. I didn't see this part. <clears throat> Radicals and racists. Don't point your finger at me. I'm just a small, 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 small. I'm just a small town white boy trying to make ends meet. Don't need your religion. Don't watch that much TV. Just making my living, baby. Well, that's enough for me. You know how many people believe, like, are feeling this? Radicals and racists, don't point your finger at me. I'm just a small town white boy just trying to make ends meet. I don't need your religion. Don't watch that much TV. Just making my living, baby. It's enough for me. I think this is one of his best songs ever written. Now compare that to 
Uh, where is it? I. Oh, did I? Did I? Did... You guys enjoying this? Let me check in on the people. Uh, I just did. Uh, let me make sure you guys are still enjoying it. Plug Owen Benjamin. Oh yeah, Owen Benjamin Clips. Make sure you follow Owen Benjamin Clips. Run by Base Tax and great dude. Uh, all right. You guys digging it? Digging it? Digging it? Want me to keep rocking? Cause I got more. I got more. All right, sweet. Let's compare the ethics of that song about just a, a white working class frustrated guy uh, to this song. Um, listen to like a song that no one cares about. Like no one would ever censor this song. It's like. Uh, that a, that, that, a, that a dog my key into the side of his pretty little, I don't know how to sing this one, but it's, uh, who sings this? Carrie Underwood before he cheats. All right. Listen to these lyrics. All right. Right now he's probably up behind her with a pool stick showing her how to shoot a combo and he don't know. That I dug my key into the side of his pretty little souped up four wheel drive, carved my name into his leather seat. I took a Louisville slugger to both headlights, slashed a hole in all four tires, and maybe next time he'll think before he cheats. Right now he's probably dabbing three dollars worth of that bathroom polo, and he don't know that I dug my key. It, I might have a little. All right. I took a Louisville swagger. All right. And maybe next time I'll think before he cheats. I might have a little trouble for the next girl because the next time that he cheats. Oh, you know it won't be on me. Oh, not on me. That I dug my key into the side of his pretty little suit. All right. So she's admitting to felonies. That because a guy is shooting pool with a girl, she has the right to destroy his car, slash his tires, bash in his headlight with a Louisville slugger. Just so that next time he won't cheat because he'll be scared of the vicious, violent reaction from this girl. Don't even get me started about rat. I mean, all right, listen to this. All right. If you, if you go with rap, I mean, I'm from the Myrtle Capital where we murder for capital. Lucifer, Lucifer, son of the morning, I'm going to chase you out of here. Kind of easy, you did it again. You a genius, nigga. Not now, he's not a genius because he supports Donald Trump. Uh, Lucifer, Lucifer, down in the morning. So you need to change your attitude. All right, Lord, forgive me. Got them dark forces in, but you also got the righteous cause for shine. All right. Uh, leave niggas on death's door, breathing on respirators for killing my best friend. Poor haters on the permanent hiatus as I skate. I'll just, I don't know. I don't feel like reading rap. It's too annoying. But the amount of uh, murder threats and just vicious, vile bullshit in, in Jay-Z songs, like, um, I'm a hustler, baby. I just want you to know. It's like, where I've been, it's where I'm about to go. He's like, I just want to love you. Be who I am. Oh, man, forget you, man. Yeah, yeah. Same song. I'm back. Been around the world. Uh, dance girl, man. Uh, I, I might wife you. And buy you nice shit, but mommy, you got to ride nice dick. Know how to work your hips and your head's priceless. Respect the love. Oh, man, I don't remember. Basically saying he buys women and sells women. And he may, may, he may marry one if she rides nice dick and sucks his dick. But she has to respect that he's still going to buy and sell women. All right. Compare that to fucking Guns N' Roses. All right, let me check out some more Super Chats. <clears throat> Law exam and woman I love cheated on me. Nine years British Army, fight on and fight through. Cheers for the laughs. Sorry to hear that, bud. Hello, Big Bear. Were you aware that Peterson's middle name is Barrent? It is Scandinavian for strong bear. We're surrounded by the very best bears. Yeah, he told me that on my live stream. It was amazing. Please break down Us and Them by Pink Floyd. Uh, the general sat and the lines on the map moved from side to side. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can do that. Reference my PayPal that references the Patreon post that I think you referenced on stream yesterday. Referenceception. Wow, that's really intense. Let me, uh, let me check out the PayPal again. 
And then I'll just hang in the ch in the chat part. Lucifer, Lucifer, son of the morning. I'm gonna take you out. I like that song, except for what he's saying. Like, musically, it's so good. Lucifer, Lucifer, light of the morning. I'm gonna... Like, Kanye West really is really good at producing. Like, uh, the, the album uh, Graduation is sick. Now let me read some of these babies. Oh, Coder Bear. Let's see what Coder Bear's up to. Lucifer, Lucifer, light in the morning. Ah, uh, Coder Bear. The chat is functional, but the app is still a little buggy. Anyone who wants to join can email unbearables.dev at gmail.com and we'll send them the link. The main reason I haven't opened it up to the public is to be able to release it in chunks of people to make sure it can handle the load. Yeah, this dude's legit. He knows exactly what the fuck he's doing. So if anyone wants to try out the... Uh, Unbearable app. Email unbearables.dev at gmail.com. Oh, and Bellevue's about to sell out. So if anyone wants to go to the Bellevue show, hugepianist.com, and then also Richland and um, Portland are still available. All right. What do we got here? David. Owen, if you go back to the question about love for a second, I was out for a walk when you talked about it. It reminded me of your talk about a fire, which is a perfect metaphor for love. Sometimes the lightning may strike and it's almost always a raging mess, but for a good fire, you don't just put a flame to a log, you clear the area, clean your room, then you get some kindling, oh dude, this is great, then you get some kindling ready, did I come up with this? This is great, dude. Then you get some kindling ready along with the progressively larger pieces of fuel, so true. When prepared, you start with kindling. If that burns too hot and too fast, the fire dies early. If you see how fast it burns, and tend to it, you can keep a bright, hot fire in no time. Keep that going, and you'll have a fire that's all but impossible to douse. As long, Yeah, once you get the coals, you're gold. Coals, they go forever. Once you get those hot coals, you're set. As long as you continue to feed it here and there, there's the fire that you can get warmth from. You can cook on it and gain nourishment. It's not about the level of heat. It's how sustainable it is. That is what a marriage is. That's so true. And also, it's even about preparing the wood itself. You know, like you're talking about kindling, then larger logs. Like you don't want freshly cut evergreen. It's all smoky. No, you want to like um, do the proper work. You know, clean your room. Or you, um, you get 18 pieces of circular logs and then you use your, um, your mull to chop them in half. And then you use your axe to cut them up into nice little pieces. And then your hatchet to chop them up even smaller. You let them dry. You know, you have plenty of white birch bark around because it's by far the most flammable shit on the planet. And um, and once you start getting the high BTUs, which is, uh, I always call them backthrobbing units, but that's a joke. I don't know what they're called, but it's the amount of uh, heat in each like um, cubic amount of wood. And so the best you can get is... Uh, you know, certain types of maple, ash is really good. It splits like a dream too. Yellow birch has high BTUs. Um, some oaks have high BTUs. Uh, and that that that's the amount of heat that can be released for the log. And you want to get as much of the water out of it as possible with drying it. So there's a lot of prep work for a really good fire. Yeah, and there's certain times when you're not ready. To, to be married or be in a relationship that healthy. You know, that's like you have to clean up your area. Make sure you have like rocks surrounding it. Make sure there's nothing that can catch fire around it. Make sure you have dried wood. It's not raining outside, you know. And once all those factors are in place, you can then start building a fire that can last and cook and light and warm. And there's nothing like it. And marriage is like the type where... You can sleep next to the fire and wake up and the coals are still warm. And then you start chopping and cutting. You know, you go have date night. You know, you fire it up again, get some fire going. But you know that you have a few days of coals. In marriage, that could be years where they're still going to burn, even in the rain. But eventually they could go out if you don't chop up some more shit and dry it out. Brandon, Manster Bear here. I posted this last week on the Patreon topic post. You replied with awesome topic. No, I talked about it yesterday. I saw you write about that today. You're the reason I did the whole thing of left hand, right hand. 
I think you referenced it yesterday, so I'll throw it out there again. If you have time to get to it, the relationship between the left and the right hand when you're improvising on piano. Do you know you're playing in a certain key as you know which keys are eligible to be played together? Are you just doing octaves? on? I, dude, I, I, I hit every one of these topics because I really like this, what you wrote. So just if you rewatch yesterday, I should cut up the section yesterday's uh, just about the music theory because a lot of people wrote to me that they like that part, which is usually what alerts me to thinking I should clip it. How do you improve on that? Is there just learning your chords and scales? I'm about seven months into piano lessons. I took them for a few years when I was a kid and then decided I wanted to start again last fall. My grandma is my piano teacher, so it's pretty awesome. Yeah, if you rewatch yesterday, I think I'd do a pretty good job explaining it. But um, yeah, you, it, you gotta follow the rules in the key. You start, the left hand can start with a chord. C is the easiest, because it's whites only. You know, it's like uh, parts of Finland. <laughs> and then you fill it in and just arpeggio it. And then if you're doing a different key, like in D, it's F sharp and, um, and C sharp. So never hit C or F, or else it sounds weird. And then E. Yeah, knowing your scales are great, but it's a, the best part of that is just for uh, finger dexterity more than anything. Because you don't really need to know that much theory. Like... Do Lydian, Mixolydian, Dorian, like all that shit gets high level if you're like a, like a jazz trombonist or some shit. But uh, just play as much as you can. And rewatch yesterday's part about that because I think I really got pretty heavy into it. Hey, Big Bear, I'm hoping you'll read this live on air. Oh, we got black flies right now, by the way. I've written you before about this organization I've recently started supporting called Operation Underground Railroad, who break kids out of sex trafficking with ex-Navy SEALs and CIA operatives working with local governments. I'm coming to your Bellevue special and would love to be able to talk to you about joining with them and the Bears. Yeah, it sounds fucking sick. I need way more info, though. They've rescued a 1,000 kids so far around the world and put away over 400 traffickers in four years. That's incredible, dude. I'm going to a conference this Friday down in Southern California where they will be raising funds and awareness. Thanks again, Big Bear, and can't wait for Bellevue. That's awesome, bro. Yeah, I'll get way behind that. Just let's hang in Bellevue and um, let's talk details and what it is and the legalities of it and how I can support. That's, I love people that actually do shit. And of course the SEALs are doing that. They're fucking awesome. Those guys, you know, they need missions. So they might as well just fuck up a bunch of pedophiles. Okay, thanks. Everyone in my office decides they want to talk to me at 11 a.m. So I must have missed that part. Thanks, Big Bear. Oh, anytime. Let me know if you get it. I can I can cut it up for you. Uh, maybe we'll put it on the Clips channel. But um, I'm still trying to finish my book. Just like I want to get it done to a point where I can send it to one of you guys to line edit. Because I had 65,000 words, but I wanted to include the part about the trans kids now and a few other things that I wasn't um, allowed to do before. And because um, I, I need to get that up and running. I got to try and make my 20K back. <laughs> Cause, um, and then, uh, yeah, Nimmer special will be on my site later today as well for five bucks. All right. So I want to see if somebody, if that one dude sent me his, uh, stand up clip, cause that could be a great way to kind of just finish things off here. Uh, where the fuck is it? Did that dude send it to me? I don't know. I don't see it. I love analyzing jokes. Huh. I guess he didn't send it. Immigrants and faggots. Get out of my way. All right. Let me pop over to YouTube. -y. And uh, make sure you hit the like button, comment, share. Let's keep the algorithms popping. Because we're fighting against a lot of forces. A lot of dark forces. You got them dark forces in them. Here's one from uh, David. My name is David. I'm an artist in Phoenix. Um, I create fantasy art like troll skulls and unicorn horns. More like unicorn dicks. I've also come up with a fictional museum to be the place where my art and artifacts originate. The Royal Imperial Museum. I was thinking the Royal Imperial Museum could be a fake UNN sponsor and produce fake documentary segments for UNN. 
I'm also planning on sending you a box with art. Dude, this is great. I love that you guys are expanding this shit. If you're up for plugging my Etsy shop, of course, of course, my friend, because you're you're up for supporting UNN. You want to get in the UNN world. Oh, go to unbearablenewsnetwork.com and submit any articles or ideas right there on the website. We got a team of bears going through all this stuff. And if you see an Owen Benjamin on there writing mean shit, that isn't me. It's a troll who drinks a lot of soy and has no dick and no balls. Uh, Etsy slash discount dragon slash N slash N O I N. I don't know. What, I mean, I hope I read that right. Discount dragon. Discount dragon. He's a discount dragon. He only sits on, he sits on gold, but it's only like a dollar forty-five. He's a discount dragon. He doesn't like to waste his fire that comes out of his fucking mouth. Unless he's gonna kill Bilbo Baggins himself. Alright, on a serious note, the pedal normalization trap. Remember this, he who frames the argument wins the debate. That is true. The postmodernists are mainstreaming pedophilia by moving all straight male sexuality into the same category. Slow down and look at the terminology they're using. Minor attracted person. Minor is not the same as prepubescent. Minor, dude, it's so true. And I'm obsessed with the definition of words, obviously. So I'm watching this happen right in front of my eyes. And all these fucking retards in LA are saying that I've lost my mind. But it's just because they're dumb, like, short men that are gay. And I'm like, dude, how do you not see what the fuck is happening? Like, like you can always tell the agenda by what words they use to convey the meaning. It's so true, and I see it all the time. Um, you know, like controversial comedian Owen Benjamin, you already set the tone for how people are going to view me. You know, controversial thinker Martin Luther King Jr., no one says that. He would think about how much more controversial he was than me. Controversial figure Mahatma Gandhi. No one says that because they don't want to frame him that way, even though that dude was a pedophile and a vicious racist. Fact. And real, you know, he was assassinated for Christ's sake. But no, no one says controversial. Controversial is a negative. Or um, like in Twitter stories when they say, uh, people react to dot, dot, dot. No, Twitter is reacting. The government is reacting, not people Sometimes it'll be like, people can't believe what dot, dot, dot said. People? No. You. Actual controversial figures are, are never called contra. Like, I'm being framed as controversial because normal, but like, unapologetic, American, male, Western, free market, patriotic, gun-owning, free speech, fuck-loving, um, opinions are seen as controversial because that's bad. Now these fucking pedophiles get these articles in Vice, like minor attracted person. Political correctness is to soften whatever they want accepted. If you find a physically mature minor to be attractive, you are by definition a minor attracted person. If they use the broader term minor Attracted person. They are technically including nearly all heterosexual males in the same category as pedophiles. See, I don't know where you're talking about with that. Hang on. They're however minors. That is the trap. If you find a physically mature minor. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like a 17-year-old with like a 0.7 hip to waist ratio. Yeah, it's true. Because there was times in America where like great people started families at 14. I'm not advocating that now because I don't think we have the... The way kids are raised now, they don't have the mental maturity to have a family ever. So not at 14. There was a time when absolutely you did. You know, like, um, was it George Washington was the admiral admiral of a fucking, or was it, yeah, I think George Washington was the admiral of a fucking giant ship at like 14. Like Thomas Jefferson ran a, a whole plantation at 14. Can you imagine that now? It's, it's laughable. So, yeah, I see exactly what you're saying. Minor versus prepubescent. I've always made that distinction. And uh, it's so different if someone before and after puberty. I agree with uh, 
with the uh, age of consent laws because I think that um, kids in America are so fucking naive and 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 um, just not ready for anything based on how they're raised. That seventeen to me, twenty to me seems like a child. I remember even when I was single, at twenty eight, I would do a college. And like 19, 20 year old girls would be out because of like uh, the movie, The House Bunny. And I remember looking at him like, you guys are like kids because of how they acted. Like I was like, that wasn't attractive to me. Who's calling me? Oh, it's fucking Alamo. I left one thing in an Alamo car and they just like, hey, we're Alamo. We're here for you. And I'm like, dude, fuck off. I don't want my folder back. All right. If you find a physically mature minor to be attractive, you are by definition a minor attracted person. If they use the broader term minor attracted person, they include nearly all heterosexual males and heterosexual females. Like when you see these women freaking out about fucking a 17 year old, um, one of these heartthrob guys, just unapologetically, you know, some of them are like 14. Like they'll do the googly eye love eyes for like, um, Justin Bieber when he was 14. I remember knowing girls that were doing that. I'm like, are you guys a bunch of fucking creeps? All right. Words are so important. He who frames the argument wins a debate. If they convince the public that all men are pedophiles, only varying by degree, they dilute the stigma associated with people who sexually abuse children. If you call everyone a Nazi, the term starts to lose all meaning. If you redefine all males as minor attracted person, the term normalizes pedophiles. Don't fall for this dangerous nonsense. Don't let them frame the... Dude, want to know another way they frame the debate? Is splitting Nazis away from socialists. It, they're socialists. Nazis are socialists. They're like saying the right is Nazis, the left is communists is the greatest trick from authoritarians. It's so obvious when you know like how they do it. They're, they're giving you a range of thought that only is what they want. That's like going up to a random girl as a guy in a bar and just go, would you rather suck my dick or jerk and suck my dick? Like, how about one response is, I don't know you, creep. Get the fuck away from me. Right? That's not on the table. There's two options. Jerk and suck or just suck. So that way they framed it. So your only options are doing something that only that guy wants and so that's what they do with Nazi communists. So the, the right wing is Nazi. The left wing is communist. Which authoritarian government do you want? Well, I don't know. What about the, the, the original conservatives that founded the, the, the country that wanted a small government? It, why isn't that on the spectrum? Oh, it's a horseshoe. No, it isn't. It's a line. It's a line between left and right. And right is small government and left is big government. That's what it means. It's the size of government and role of government in your life. And that's why liberals are here, even though it, the trick of liberals that I fell for for a, at least a decade of my fucking life was that they're the freedom people. No, they want the government to legislate um, personal choices in their life. And that is still big government. That's why you start seeing the left become more and more authoritarian. True right wing is small government, tiny government, not a lot of regulation, not a lot of telling anybody what to do with their personal lives, free speech, um, right to bear arms. You know, the government can't come in your house. Government can't make you quarter soldiers, all that shit. That's what right wing is. It's not fucking Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler is the ultimate socialist. He collectivized fascist means fasci. That's from the socialists in Italy. Fasci means bundle of sticks. That's what collectivization means. Mussolini was one of the heads of the socialist uh, party. And when people think I'm just being like paranoid or why do you care? Because it will kill. Is that one dude pointed out? One point, what? 4% of humans alive in the 20th century were killed by their own government. So 1.4. Think about that. Let's just say 2% because that was the low ball. 2% killed by the government. That's one in 50 people you know gets a bullet in their head in a shallow grave. Okay, is that not a problem? So why not point out with a feverish, uh, with like a, 
uh, like a, 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 a feverish degree of, of enthusiasm and, and uh, timeliness, uh, what is leading to that? And that's why I think having children makes you more aware of politics and government and social bullshit is because I'll be dead, probably, when this shit starts going down, if it keeps going on this path. But my kids won't. And, and I don't want anything to happen to them. I want them to learn lessons the way children should learn lessons, by falling and skinning their knee and playing too hard or having their heart broken or getting too drunk. That shit. Not a fucking government agent putting a pistol like Che Guevara on the back of their skull and blowing their brains out at 12 because the little kid tried to save his father from an execution. And then you see people with Che Guevara t-shirts on at fucking uh, these concerts or on television. You're like, oh, this is real. This is happening. And no one seems to give a shit. So thanks, David. Well, you guys care. The Bears care. We'll fight. We'll fight. We'll fight, fight, fight. Yeah, Nimmer's special is great. You guys will dig it. Only five bucks. Buy it, because I've already paid Nimmer. <sighs> All right, Patrick. Hey there, Big Bear. Just wanted to say hello and get officially verified as Gunsmith Bear. Love what you do, man. Keep up the good fight. Welcome, Gunsmith Bear. You're a good man. All right, let me check out uh, the normal chat. Let's see if anybody has any final... Uh, difference, global socialism, national socialism. That's exactly the difference. National social socialism is the collectivization of Germany uh, to get all the resources from other countries. Like they were using other, uh, they were using uh, other countries as, um, as almost like colonies for, to get shit. Like they were going to exterminate Russia and use all their fucking land to expand. Uh, international communism, which is what, um, which is what, or socialism, it's the same fucking words. That's a trick as well. Which is what Russia was doing. Wanted the whole world to be under their system, which is just as fucked up. If not more fucked up. Hitler's was uh, more containable. Because the thing about the Russian, the international socialism, is they were trying to uh, recruit, actively recruit other countries. And every country they would get would just descend into madness and genocide and starvation. And the, the track record is they have, they're batting zero. And to see John Oliver on television defending socialism, like what a fucking piece of garbage. Like go back to England, you fuck. Like you come to America and get all our resources and all our money and all our your fame and all this shit. Go fucking home. That's why people don't like immigrants like that. People like immigrants that, that blend in. It's not about race. I Dude, I'll show you. Hundreds of thousands of Mexicans I'd take over John Oliver. And he's white as fuck. I don't give a fuck about your skin color. Do you want to be here? Do you want to be part of America's values? Do you want freedom? Do you want individual freedom? Do you want family values? If not, go back to England, you fucking rancid-faced monkey. Try and call me racist for saying this shit about John Oliver. He's as white as a dead guy's ass. Fucking loser. Calling himself a comedian. He's not a comedian. He's a goddamn socialist fucking radical. He's on television defending socialism recently. Crowder's about to fucking blast him for it. It's going to be awesome. It always ends in death. All right. Let's read some of these super chats. Dom, after a serious illness and hospital stay, and now... Lack of income. I need help for medical and monthly bills. Any that can, a $5 donation would be greatly appreciated. Uh, I need to know more about you, man. You can't. I, I, you could just be a random guy because you just gave me 20 bucks to get $5 donations. I don't understand that at all. Going to need more backstory before I spread that to the bears. I don't get why you would do that if you need money. And monthly bills isn't exactly what I'm all about either. I'm all about people that, that are in a hole and need help. It's like, Big Bear, I got nothing. I need money for food. I got a plan. You know me. I'd be like, here's money. I won't even ask questions. I won't make you feel bad about it. And I don't even want it back. But I'm not going to fucking help someone with monthly bills. That I'm not going to berate you, dude. You might be in a bad spot. I'm being a dick. I'm just thinking about fucking John Oliver. But just, just don't give me a super chat if you're hurting on money. 
I promise you, like, I, I don't take any joy in that. And I feel like weird about it. I wish I could just give that back to you. Um, unless you're just trying to scam or some shit, which would piss me off tremendously because that's happened to me. Why do you think I, I get a little fucking weird about that? I've given money to people that it turns out they, I, it's like word for word what they say to all kinds of people. And I just get so fucking pissed. Uh, PC, dude, new joke. Because you're only a quarter Jew, you only qualify to sell birch wood, not gold. That's hilarious. Or birch copper or birch aluminum. That's funny, dude, but it should be a metal. Like Shapiro's selling birch gold. I sell birch aluminum. I'm like birch aluminum. Enter, uh, you know, code Benjamin. I'm a quarter Jew. Justin, I'm in school for computer science. And I was wondering if I could help at all or contribute to your app maybe. I can't find Coder Bear. Coder Bear, where are you? Email me. I'll, I'll link you to. I got to go. I'm over time. Redicus, long time no see. I miss watching you rant. I have too much night watch, um, watching with Crowder, Shapiro, and Gavin to catch up on Vimeo. I'm glad to be back, man. It's an honor. Diff oh, I read the difference one. So what you're saying is that fascists are faggots. Literally. Literally, they are. Fasci means faggot means fascist. It's all the same shit. It's the collectivization. The whole thing that they would say is that the group is stronger than the individual. And the way you, you show that is by breaking a twig, but showing that the group is stronger. And that is only true with um, consent. You know, like the bears. We're stronger as a group, but that's because everyone chooses to be there. When you have a government that forces you in little bundles called faggots, that's socialism. And that is not stronger. You remove everything. Nobody ever invents a computer with a gun to their head. You can't like, like that's why America had the biggest boom of inventions and business and all that shit. When we had the smallest, most free market part of our history, which is the 1800s, please read PayPal and you should podcast with Ron Paul. Yeah, I should. I love Ron Paul. I'll see him uh, in a few weeks. I was late today. Did you decide to pass over my PP PayPal? No, I'm sure I read. It. I think I read everybody's. How do you become a bear? If you get verified by the big bear after uh, coming up with a name and then you just jump into the community and you just really just fucking dig in. Get yourself some honey, some salmon, you know, scratch your back on a big old oak tree. And if you did, that's okay. I'm cool. Send it around midnight. I'm, I'm sure I read it in. Hey, big bear, would you ever consider doing an interview on another YouTube show? I have a spot for you if you would consider. Of course, it's just all about um, timing and about uh, schedule. But if you follow up a bunch of times and I'm free, yes. Like this one dude wants to get me on this cryptocurrency show. And he's even like, dude, I'll give you crypto. And I'm all about that shit. And I just keep forgetting or my um, schedule gets all over the place. So like, yeah, just know I want to. Just follow up as much as you can. Uh, Mika Woodward. Hey, thanks, buddy. All right. I think that's going to do it today. Uh, let me check in, in here. Uh, Dom Networking. Does anyone know who the dude was? Who uh, needs help, if that's a real person? And did you guys have fun today? I got censored, but the guy that tells me to kill myself doesn't. Oh, fucking, yeah, I know. People are crazy. Yeah, Mansa Bear, that was not me. Yeah, I don't know who that was. I'd like to combine it with her father's escapes. It was a... Love you, Bears. How are you doing, Ice? Iceman. Awesome show, Owen. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Pinder. Beers in Omaha? Yes. Loving UNN ideas? Yeah. Unbearablenewsnetwork.com. Google Hangout 4 p.m. Explain yourself to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, Big Bear. What's up? <laughs> Ice Bear. Iceman is Isis. I love everyone else. Iceman is the greatest man alive. He gave me fucking George. He gave me my dog. He's also a quarter Jew. Living in Pennsylvania, just getting shit done. He gave me a, at the Pittsburgh show, he gave me a glass of moonshine and then proceeded to spill it all over our audio equipment. But we still got uh, Nimmer's sets. Audio is amazing. All right. Uh, try to get more guests. I will try and get more guests. Love from Russia, Owen. Love to Russia. Galu boy, galu boy. Nyaka juik raksta boy. Been a while since I was able to catch one of these. Still love you though, Owen. Hope all is well. You better still fucking love me. Kyle's lyrics will be tomorrow. I didn't get to it. I just saw his email. I'll do it tomorrow. I, I, I spent too much time on Guns N' Roses. 
All right, tomorrow, 11, same time, same place, 11 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, come hang out. Patreon.com slash WDTL or HugePianist.com slash subscribe. You you get uh, emails and shit if I'm selling stuff or tickets early. And, uh, and interviews with my mom that I only put there. It also helps us keep going, helps us know how much we got for the month. Like, if, like I, I'm buying a new camera right now. Uh, all kinds of shit. It's going on. I get to pay people. What else is going on? Um, tickets at my website. You can buy my last two specials on my website. And Eric Nimmer's special, Send It, will be available later today. And uh, what else? What else? Make sure you hit the like button, comment, share it. I'm not on Twitter anymore. But you can follow me at Owen Comedy. Deliver runs that one. Um, there's another thing. I was, uh, Owen Benjamin Clips on YouTube. What the fuck else is I going to plug? UnbearableNewsNetwork.com. And... I don't know. I think that's about it. You didn't read my super chat. Can I be Boiler Bear? Welcome, Boiler Bear. Sorry about that. I thought I, thought I got to everybody. All right. Much love, guys. I'm going to go uh, do some work outdoors in the rain, but it's really good for uh, the soul. There's a fake Owen Benjamin on Twitter. No clips. Oh, dude, there's fake me's everywhere. That's the whole point of verification, by the way, on Twitter and Instagram. These fucking retards don't understand that. They're like, how do you still have a blue check mark? Because it isn't approval. It's saying it's really me and not a fucking imposter, which happens all the time. Yeah, check out Pinder, too. Steve Pinder, he's got a lot of shit going on. Same with Kyle Kavanaugh, the Bear Jew. Um, anybody else want to be plugged that I know and I'm friends with and I can vouch for? And it, They're not tricking me. Yeah, where's Pinder's... Uh, what should I plug with him? Fake Owens do blow. Read Kyle Cavanaugh lyrics tomorrow, please. I will. I promise, veteran bear. That'll be top of the top of the um, agenda. I'll be live streaming at four. Sweet. Net, that's from Networking Bear. Four p.m. Central. Nice. At Dom. Oh, and uh, why didn't they laugh on iTunes, Stitcher, all that shit? Subscribe if you want to just hear uh, if you want to just hear the fucking audio. I love you guys. Real Owen plugs, fake Owens blow, dude. Fake Owens blow. And if anyone wants to cut up any of this and put it on YouTube, go for it. Cause uh, Owen Benjamin Clips has been very successful. He's uh, starting to make some cash on that thing. He's get he's fucking legitimately. If you get the right clips and really uh, push them out, they fucking work. All right, peace, love.